What's up guys, my name is Michael and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to go over Code Forces round 649, which is, this is surprisingly because this tutorial, this editorial actually came out today right after the contest was over. So this is actually really cool. And also I could not solve this problem. Um, this, I actually just uh, looked at the solution just now and submitted, but I could not, couldn't actually solve this problem in the contest. But now that I look at it, um, you probably can. So I, I understand how, why the solution worked. So now let's look at this problem. So pretty much there's a guy who loves number theory, but he hates the number X. So you're given the array A and you want to find the length of the longest subarray such that the sum of its elements isn't divisible by X. So if the subarray doesn't exist, then we're going to print out negative one. So we want to find the longest subarray such that the sum of its elements isn't divisible by X. So the longest subarray such that the sum of the elements isn't divisible by X. Okay, so what do I mean by subarray? A subarray means that you could delete sur uh, several numbers from the beginning or the end, or none at all. So let's look at this array, one, two, three. This array, one, two, three, is the array, one, two, three. So what are the subarrays of a one, two, three? Well, I only could remove elements before or after it, right? I can't, yeah, I can't just remove an element in the middle. So a subarray of one, two, three would be two, three, right? Two, three is a subarray of the whole array of one, two, three. And the, the reason why for this is because I removed the element one from it, from the array one, two, three. So subarray means that you could only remove elements from the beginning or the end. So uh, also one, two is a subarray of one, two, three reason why it is a subarray of one, two, three is because three, we remove the element three from the end, right? So one array one, two is going to be a subarray of the total array of one, two, three. Okay. So now, uh, now what's also a subarray one, two, three is a subarray of one, two, three, right? The whole array itself is also a subarray of one, two, three. The reason why is that you could remove zero elements from the beginning and zero elements from the end, and you still have the same array of itself. So, so that's what a subarray means, okay? I cannot remove a middle element. I cannot remove two, right? That's not a subarray. Like, like, like one, three is not a subarray of the array one, two, three, because I cannot remove elements in the middle. I only can remove, remove elements from the beginning or the end or not remove any elements at all, okay? So that's what a subarray is. And we need to find the length of the longest subarray should that such that the sum of the elements isn't divisible by X. So what does that mean? That means that in this subarray one, two, three, right? Uh, in this array one, two, three, if I get a subarray two, three, I want to find the longest sum of all the elements in that subarray. So two plus three, five, five. We need to find that sum the longest subarray such that the sum is not divisible by X. So two plus three is five. Five is not divisible by three, right? Or X is three in this case. So that's why the longest, longest length of that subarray is two. So that's why I outputted the value two. Okay, so that's what this means. Now, if we tried another subarray, one, two, right? This, the sum of, one plus two is three, but three is divisible by three. So that's that doesn't count as a the longest subarray of sums that is isn't divisible by x, right? One plus two is three. Three is divisible by three, so that doesn't count, right? So our job is to find the length of the longest subarray such at such that the sum of its elements isn't divisible by x, which is three. So how do you do this problem? So Let's just go over the solution of what they did, and then I'll explain why they did it. Okay, so first of all, we use two pointers. The two pointers is going to be L and R. Okay, L is going to point to the beginning of the array, and R is going to point to the end of the array. So what do we do? For first of all, we're going to go through, uh, first of all, we, lead, we read in all the test cases because that's what we have to do. And then we read in the length of the array n and the x, the value that we're trying to divide by. Okay, now 
we first going to set the left pointer that we're pointing at for our position in our array is going to point to negative one. This is going to serve as a placeholder, okay, or a sentinel, how they call it in CLRS. But I digress, okay. R is going to point at the last element, the last position of the element in our array. So that's n minus one. Then we have a each of the elements that we're going to read in A, right? So we're not actually going to store in any of values. We're just going to read in every single element. And then we have a sum called total sum. So now I'm going to go through the number of elements that I'm going to read in, and I'm going to read in each element. Okay. So now here's the tricky part about this question. Let's say I have this array one, two, three, right? And I want to find the sum, which is longest sub, sub array, which is not divisible by three, or x value three. So we, we have to think about what happens if I remove values. So let's find the total sum in the beginning. So one plus two is three, three plus three is six. Okay, so my total sum is six. What if I were to remove the last value, three? Okay, if I remove three, my total sum is gonna be six minus three, and that's gonna be three. So three is still divisible by three. So what does that mean? That means that if I remove an element that is still divisible, that is divisible by my x value, three, it's still, it's not gonna help me, right? It's still gonna be divisible by three. In our case, like six minus three, the element that we're removing is three, is still divisible by three. So if I remove elements at the end where it's not, that is, that is divisible by three, it's not gonna help me. Let's look about this. Think about this. Um, here in this case, one, two, three. What if I remove the element one, the beginning value of one from my array? So what does that mean? So our total sum is six, and I'm gonna remove the value one from the array. Six minus one is five. Five is not divisible by three. So what does that tell us? That tells us is that if I remove an element that is not divisible by X, my subarray total sum is still not gonna be divisible by X, right? So if six, like my total sum six, I removed the beginning array one, my element of one. So my subarray sum is now two, two plus three is five. Since one was not divisible by three in the beginning and I removed the one, the rest of the array sums two, three is not going to be divisible by three. So that helps us a lot. So the, here's what we're going to do. We are going to read in every single each element of our array. We are going to check if that certain element, the number that we're reading is not divisible by X, okay? So if it's not divisible by X, we are going to get point, the leftmost value that is not divisible by X, L is gonna to point to that location, that position in the array. And then R is going to point to the rightmost value that is not divisible by X, right? So in this, in this, in this, uh, this if statement, this is checking if A is not divisible by X. So if my each element is my current element that I just read in is not divisible by X, my left pointer L is only is going is uh, the left side is going to point to that if is the uh, if my left side is the starting value. So the L is just a sentinel. So this, this doesn't matter, right? My L is going to point to it, okay? So L is going to point to the first element that is not divisible by X. That's what this L is doing, okay? That's what it is doing. This, is, this, this negative one is just sentinel, it doesn't matter. This is just indicating that it's the first element. That's what this is indicating, right? Because we set our L value to point to negative one in the beginning. So this is just going to point to the first value 
This if statement is going to point to the first value that is not divisible by x. Okay, that's what this if statement is doing. So in our case, this is going to point to the point to one, right? The position of one, uh, the position of the element one, right? Because one is the first element that is not divisible by x of three. Okay, so that's what this does. Now my right pointer r is going to point to the rightmost value that is not divisible by x. So the, in this case, r is going to point to 1 as well. Right? r is going to point to 1 as well. Okay. Then we read in the second value. Now we're going to read in the next value. Right? The next value is going to be 2. So I read in 2. Right? I'm not going to change my left my left pointer. Right? My left pointer is only going to point to the first element that's not divisible by it. So that's going to remain as it added as it is. Okay. My R is going to point to the next one. So my R is now going to point to the position that I, of the next value, which is two. Okay. So that's what it does. So my, in this after this iteration, in this case, L is going to point to the position of one. R is going to point to the rightmost position of two. Okay, so now now three, three gets put in, reads in three, so now it reads three. So what does this do? If I read in three, three is divisible by x because three uh, our x current value is three. Three is divisible by three, so I'm not going to update anything. So at this end of this for loop, what is my L and R? My L and R is going to be L is going to point to one, R is going to point to two. Okay. Uh, L is going to point to the position, position of one, R is going to point to the position of two. Okay. So now, uh, during this whole time, we're keeping track of the total sum. Okay. So now, what does this, this, what does this if statement do? We are going to check if the total sum is not divisible by X. If the total sum is not divisible by X, that means that the whole array whole array, one, two, and three. If my whole original array, the sum of all the elements of that total sum, one plus two plus three, three. Uh, so yeah, if it's not divisible by X, that's just gonna be the size of the whole array, right? Right, because that's gonna be the longest subarray because no other subarray that's of that, the original array is going to be less than it, right? The longest subarray is going to be just be the whole array because all the sum of all the elements in that the, in the original array is not divisible by x. So the longest sum is just going to be the length of the whole array. Okay, so that's this. That's what this case is testing for, right? If this is just testing if the whole original array its sum was not divisible by x, then, it, then we're just printing out the whole array, the length of the whole array, which is n. So that's what we print out. Now here, what is this testing case? If L is equal to negative one, why do we test this? Why do we check this? L is gonna be the first value that is not divisible by X, right? We pointed to that, pointed to that, right? The first element is not divisible by X. We set L to point to that. If my L is still pointing to negative one, what does that mean? That means that no element in the whole array isn't divisible by X. So that means that all the elements in the array are divisible by X. So if all the elements are divisible by X, that means that no possible subarray could occur because the, like all the sums of all the elements are divisible by X. No possible subarray can occur. So that's why we print out negative one because no possible subarray sum of all the, uh, of any parts of the subarray is possible. So that's where we have negative one. Now here's the thing, here's the tricky part. This equation is a tricky, tricky, very tricky. Okay, so at this point, we have two pointers. One pointing to the first starting element that is not divisible by X. R is going to point to the last element, the furthest last element that is not divisible by X. So what does that mean? Now, I want the longest subarray whose sum isn't divisible by x. That means that I'm going to subtract by a minimum value, 
right? Because I'm going to subtract the total length of the array by some small value that I'm going to remove, right? From the left side, I'm going to remove a certain number of elements from the left side. The right side, I'm going to remove a certain number of elements from the right side, right? So if I minimize the, the elements that I'm removing from the left or the right, that's going to be the longest subarray whose sum isn't divisible by x, okay? So what am I doing here? Well, I got the leftmost number that's not divisible by x, right? The leftmost. L is the leftmost element that is not divisible by x. And I am going to add 1 to it. Why? Because that's the number of elements from the left side that I'm removing that are not divisible by x, right? If I look at, okay, let's, let's look back at this. Let's take a look at this case one, two, three, and let's look at the the number x that I'm uh, that that uh, the second case. Let's say x is four. Where four is the number that we're checking that's not divisible by, right? So one, two, three. What is the leftmost element that is not divisible by four? That's one. Okay, so that's going to be one. Okay. Now, what is the rightmost element that is not divisible by 4? 3. Okay? So my L is, my L is pointing the position of 1. 3 is pointing at position of... R, R, the R is going to point at position 3. So if I'm removing the elements on the left side, and I'm removing, it's not divisible by 1. So that's going to be L plus 1. Right, because that's the number of elements on the left side that are not divisible by by four by x. Right, L is pointing to the first position of the the first position of the the um, element that is not divisible by x, which is four. Right, so the first position that it's not divisible by is one. Right, one. So one plus one, uh, no, no, my bad. Um, yeah, so the first position that we're pointing at is at location zero. So remember, this is this is index from zero, one. This is index from starting from uh, index from zero, right? So one's position is at position zero. One's position is at, is at position zero. And three's position is at position two, right? Because we're indexing from starting from zero. So that's zero, one, two. So three is at position two, one is at position zero. Okay. So if I'm removing the leftmost side of the number of elements that I'm moving from the left side, that's going to be L plus one, right? Because I'm indexing at zero. Okay. So that's the, that's the number of elements I'm moving from the left side. So that's why we have L plus one, L plus one. Okay. Now, L plus 1 is, so the, my starting, my L, L value is at position 1, and that's, uh, is at location, the index of the position, the index of the element 1, which is 0, right? So 0 plus 1 is 1, so the number of elements we're moving from the left side is going to be 1, okay? So now, what about this part? n minus r. So r is pointing to the position of the rightmost, which is 3, right? And that's 2. The position of, uh, of this element is 0, 1, 2. And then the total number of elements, n minus 0, 1, 2. So 3 minus 2 is going to be 1. So I'm removing one element on the right side. Right, one element from the right side. Three minus zero, one, two is one element from the right side, and that is the that's the number of elements I'm removing from the right side. So now, if I do a minimum of that, that's the minimum number of elements I'm removing from the left side or the right side. Right, that's going to be the minimum element I'm removing, and then if I take my total number of elements, subtract by the minimum number of elements I'm removing from the left side or the right side. 
then I get the longest subarray. So yeah, that's that's what I'm doing, and that's that's basically how you solve this problem. You take and then you take n minus total of these minimum number of elements removed from left and right, and then that's it. Yeah, so that's how you do this problem. I hope I explained the solution well to you guys. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later. Peace.